Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. It's Harp Tuesday! And in this episode, I thought what I would do is just take a quick look at a piece from Betty Paré's first harp book. And this is En Roulant, which is a French-Canadian um, sort of skipping song, right? And nice little piece, fun piece, and I just thought it would be great to go back to a, a, a really fairly easy piece and just talk about some of the things to think about while we're doing it. So um, this is on page 16 of my edition at least, uh, key of G. And let's, um, I'm going to start I think by just talking about the rhythm. So it's in 6-8, which means in each bar we have 6 eighth notes. But not only does that mean we have 6 eighth notes, 6 eight also implies a certain information about the structure of the rhythm. So that rather than like six separate beats, six eight means we're going to have two beats, two bigger beats of three eighth notes each. So that we'll hear one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, one, two. In other words, especially like this in a piece like this, which is going fairly quickly, but we can, you know, we can always kind of go back and feel the bigger beat. And in this, there are two big beats consisting of a dotted quarter each or three eighth notes. So um, just something to be aware of, that information that's implied in the six eight. And if we're looking at this rhythm, we can always count it out. We can clap, right? We can just check to see how it sounds. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll, we'll be counting the eighth notes, or we could count one, two, three, one, two, three. And in some ways that's even easier. We're, we're trying to just make it as easy as possible to do and kind of just zone in on what this rhythm is going to sound like. So if we did that, we'd have, and let's say we clap with the notes that are getting played. So it's one, two, because it starts with a quarter note worth two eighth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The dotted quarter is worth three eighth notes. So we get one, two, three. And then we one, two, three, 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 one, two. Oh, uh, whatever it is. Um, so we we can start to feel this. Um, bum, 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 bum. One, two, three. 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 Um, that it's a skipping rhythm, right? It's a very swing, sort of skipping rhythm. It's great. It's fun, right? That sort of six eight thing that's going on there. Um, so that's always something you can do, right? Like if you come across a rhythm, you just want to kind of get the rhythm in your head, in your ear. Um, without worrying about the notes, is you can always just clap it, count and clap, right? Um, count the beats you want to count and clap where the actual notes are happening. So then let's look at actually playing it. Um, and I'll briefly go over the right hand. Uh, brackets are very nice. You know, she, she's clearly we're going to place all three of these. We come down, find these two, come off, find them again. Great, that's a little pattern we can notice that we play these. That D E, and then we just find those two same two notes again, except I'll reverse the order. Oh, and now we're back to the beginning. And again, when you're learning a piece, just trying to be aware of these patterns, whether consciously or or maybe just uh, unconsciously, right? But it's really helpful if we can glom a whole bunch of information and say, hey, instead of these three separate notes, here's this pattern that we've seen at the beginning, which is in fact just the start of a scale, right? Three strings in a row. And now we have to place all four fingers, right? That bracket over all those next four notes, four, three, two, one, find all of them. And again, we could do that while counting. We can do one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. It re repeats, it looks like. Great, yeah. Four fingers. You know, thinking about nice closing action going on there. 
thinking about getting away from the string, that little wrist movement, that hinging at the wrist, knuckles leading away when we come off so that we come away and then very important, we drop back down, come away, drop back down, come away, drop back down, etc. Then we get this middle section where we've got Oh, we've done this before. Excellent. And here she has, she hasn't put brackets. She's just put the phrase marking under these next three notes to indicate that we're going to connect all three of them. So we're going to play two. We're going to replace two. So if we wanted to write a bracket, we'd have a bracket under those first two notes and an overlapping bracket over the next two. So that E is part of a bracket between the D and the E and between the E and the D. In other words, the bracket here to start with two notes on the two fingers on the string, play two, and then before we play one, we'll go replace two back on that D, play the D, no, that play the E, and that's three, one, two, three, one, two, three, a couple long dotted quarters. Um, and I think that repeats. And then we just do one more of these. fingers. Great, so already we're seeing we're seeing some of these patterns, right? And some of this repetition, there's a lot of repetition. Um, and we can see that, okay, there's this original, right? So the structure of that, this is all the same. And it's just, are we going like this? Or are we going like this? If we've, if we've just done this, Next time we're going to do four, three, two, one. If we've just done that, we're going to go back to the two, one, one, two, and then we get this middle section. And if we can memorize or learn this little, then we've got this little repeat of what we had before, the two, one, one, two, on those same notes. And almost the same, except slightly different. That's, that can be, of course, tricky, right? When you get to something that is very similar to something you've learned before and are doing often or something, but it's a little bit different, right? Because we can, we can want to go, oh great, we're going 2-1, we should come off and then do 1-2. And this time we're doing that 2-1 and replace and just 2 by itself. So a spot to just be aware, right? A little mental flag that, hey, something, you know, this is a little bit different. Um, and then it repeats. Uh, great. Let's look at the left hand. and. It's possible, of course, this left hand, we could do some connection. This is fairly early on in the book, and she's trying to, I think, just keep this as clean and simple as possible. So it's marked all with two, and it's kind of nice. And what it does is a great chance to think about that wrist movement, right? So, um, you know, place two, we play it with a closing motion, making sure that we're closing down towards the palm at the same time as we can think about leading with the knuckles and bending at the wrist to get away from the strings a little bit. The danger always is, right, that if you're thinking about getting away, you don't want to start curling. You don't want to think that, oh, the fingers must curl up, right? We don't want to go like this. We want to make sure that it's still that nice closing motion down towards the bottom of the palms. But at the same time, there's that little string on the back of the knuckles that's pulling the hand up and away from the strings and then we'll get to just fall back down. That's also really important as well. Don't end up in a position like this. You want to always relax back down so the wrist gets to pretty neutral position. And of course, you can think about the rest of these fingers. We're just playing with two, but try and make sure that um, you're, of course you're closing everything, but then when you go to find two, make sure that these fingers relax so that you're not finding that they're stuck in on the palm and we're just doing just doing two by itself that think of these fingers as a unit right that they open and close together so a great chance to just kind of zone in on two and let's just check some of these patterns of what's happening so ah interesting left hand starts on a g right hand starts on a b right hand ends on a g left hand ends on a B. So they're trading spots, right? So you can think about this left hand is starting where the right hand is going to end up. And the left hand is going to end up where the right hand started, an octave lower, right? Um, the, so we could be 
doesn't sound quite as nice. Same, it's all part of a G chord. But we're trying to have that harmony, right, of those two different notes instead of two Bs. So the G and the B. And now we're going to, of course, we, we're getting a G here, so we're going to get a slightly different note. We're going to get a different note within the G chord in the left hand. Great. And then this. Ah, well, left hand is just going down one string. So it's, it's like up, left, right hand is going up, you know, from low to high. And we're on the higher note in left hand, and then down, down one more note. You can also think about that this is a C chord. And we're then we back to this G chord, but not essential. Um, back to the beginning. Aha. Hmm. Okay. Well, now left hand actually comes down and finds the same note that the right hand is going to play, that D. It just doesn't play it with the right hand, right? Because this is still three, and the left hand's always playing on the, those big beats. You can see, right? They're clearly in the left hand, we have those two big beats I was talking about, those two groups of three eighth notes, or one uh, dotted quarter. So we get three, one, two, three. Oh, and the left hand ends up on the same note as the right hand again. So this little section, the left hand is pretty much mirroring what the right hand is doing. So let's see, here we start. Okay, I, I know that this is the opposite of the right hand, right? They're kind of creating spots. And that left hand is going up and down opposite thing. Matching the right hand. Great, I've got that little spot memorized, you know, that little section memorized. Then we get this midsection. Um, and what have we got? Uh, both hands are starting with this G. And now, haha, this is kind of a fun spot to play. The left hand does the same thing, same pattern, same rhythm as the right hand. Finally, we, instead of just doing that one, two, one, two, that those dotted quarters, we now get to do this little um, three, one, two, three, one, two rhythm. And in this case, we're both, you know, we're going up and down and we're doing it a third apart. Um, uh, and a third just means that if you count the string that you're starting on, one, two, three, that's a third apart. Um, so this is also a third apart, right? One, two, three, third apart. Great. And then again, we get this G just by itself. And these thirds. Oh. And again, that's saying it's doing exactly the same fingering and rhythm that the right hand is doing that two, or three, one, two, three, <laughs> three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and that, that connecting back. So using those little patterns, you may not need to. You may sit down and be able to look at this and, and read it, no problem. But it can be helpful to just be aware of those patterns and, and if not for this, for other pieces so that um, it just helps grab a bunch of information um, and make it in a easy to digest form, right? The, the chunks of, of, of meaning. So um, anyway, hope some of that was useful. And um, I will see you next week with a Slow Motion Monday episode um, next Monday. Cheers. <laughs>